So my name is Joyce Lynn. I'm a developer advocate with Postman. Um, the talk of today is called Fake It Till You Make It. We'll talk about mock servers. Who here uses mocks um, already? OK, I see like 10 hands. Pretty good. Um, so we'll talk about what mock servers are, how they're used in agile development, and then we'll deke over into how Postman Engineering specifically uses mocks. So what are mock servers? The talk title is called Fake It Till You Make It. It's a little bit of a BuzzFeed title. It implies that mock servers are not real servers, but they are actual servers. They're just not yours, where you have to code it, deploy it, and then futz with all the infrastructure. So a mock server lets you mock a server response. Your options are to roll your own, you can use a third-party service like Postman or something else to create and host your mock responses, or you could just not use mock servers. So a lot of teams use mocks in their dev process, um, and they can help you be more agile. But when I'm talking about agility, I'm not necessarily talking about speed of development or velocity. It's also about the continuous cycle of iteration. So with agile development, semi-double equals to a continuous cycle where you start off with continuous planning, you move on to continuous development, and then testing, and hopefully you have some way to observe your results and then loop it back so you can iterate and continuously improve. All right, so let's start with the first step, first stage, continuous planning. In the earliest stages, mocks are used to prototype an API or a new service. So the 10 people that had their hand raised, who's prototyping? Zero hands I see. Oh, one hand I see, okay. So to prototype a new idea, you start off with a product owner. So this might be an architect, architect right there, that's designing, here's what a proposed service will look like. You might have a mobile or a front-end developer communicating with the back-end saying, here's what I'm going to be building out, and here's what I need from you to support what I'm building out. So you have a product owner that describes this new service, and then this becomes a starting point for a discussion. Then you have all the people that will ultimately get involved or any kind of stakeholders that are able to see something a little bit more tangible and weigh in and provide their feedback. And you hash it all out, and once you achieve a consensus and you decide, here's what I'm going to be building, then you move on to development. Okay, so you agreed what you're going to be working on in planning, and this becomes your definition of done, if you have that kind of thing. Um, and this is requirements or specifications for what the team will get started on. So in traditional waterfall development, a lot of times I hear, oh, we have a two-week sprint, you know, development gets started, and then QA comes in afterwards, writes the test around it. How do you do all this stuff in two weeks? Well, you can have parallel development. We all know for split stack architecture, you can have front end, back end, mobile and platform, like whatever, going in parallel for development. But you can also have QA people, people that are involved in testing your APIs, involved from the very beginning, and once you've agreed upon your specification, they start writing your tests immediately. So another form of parallel development. Okay, so once you've deployed your service to production, hopefully you're continuing to test them in production, um, and your services are gonna have internal and external dependencies, and at scale this can get a little bit complicated. So when you mock your dependencies, you can actually isolate your systems under test. So this example here stubs out the backend services and then spins up mock services so that you're not actually hitting external dependencies, or internal dependencies, rather. And then when you automate these scenarios, then you're able to detect your defects a little bit earlier and have that continuous cycle of iteration faster. You can also simulate edge cases. So say you're hitting a production API and it's rate limited, or you don't actually want to incur errors in production. You can simulate these edge cases using mock services. All right, so super quickly, let's recap. You have a product owner that mocks their intended service. Here's what I want this service to look like. And then the team hashes it out, creates a consensus, and then they move on to develop, develop or test in parallel, write their test in parallel. And then once you deploy in production, you have developers that will stub out external dependencies to isolate the system that's under test. Okay, so let's take a look at how Postman Engineering uses mocks. So this is an actual glamour shot of the Postman Engineering team. They're all quite beautiful. Um, but really quickly, the Postman Engineering team is about 55 engineers separated into re uh, responsibilities for platform, about 30 plus microservices and product. And the product team releases the Postman app. Hopefully everyone has seen this before in one form or another. So we have the app for Mac, Windows, and Linux uh, for production and a Canary version. Yeah, we know the uh, Postman app, but there's a bunch of other stuff too. 
And all this other stuff is enabled by a graph of internal microservices. So let's walk through an example. Say we have an idea for a new service that we want to spin up. In Postman, you have a service owner. I'm the service owner, and I have this idea for a new service, and I'm going to call it, it has to do with search. So in Postman, I would create a new workspace. So I'll just point with my hand right here. In this, you can see the workspace at the very top center, search service. I've hashtagged it service. Uh, workspaces are just like a bucket a bucket or a lens that you can collect all of your collections, environments, and all your Postman stuff in a workspace. And my new service is going to be something around search. And now I'll start creating my collections. So this is how I'm going to be collaborating with potential consumers. So I'm the service owner. I actually create a collection that's a blueprint. A blueprint's like a lightweight way, light way, light way of saying, here's how I want to describe what my future service to look like. So I create a collection. And in my collection, I have examples of requests and responses so that I can begin documenting and describing my new service. Hopefully, this sounds familiar. So once you propose what your new service is going to look like, you have the negotiation side. And in Postman or offline, you can comment and you can say, hey, I think this should look a little bit more like this, or I actually don't like this, get rid of it altogether. So you're negotiating with your stakeholders. And then once you reach consensus, then we can start developing. And that's where mocks come into play. So if you've never seen a mock in Postman, this is what it looks like. Uh, you can see the URL here is a Postman cloud hosted URL. And you're hitting some sort of endpoint. In this case, the example is slash Nordic. And it's returning an example response. So you have the paired requests and responses from your blueprint that are now informing what a mock server response will look like. And then you can decouple your dependencies. So what do I mean by this? We talked about this earlier. Parallel development, we talked about the front end, back end, we talked about the dev QA. But in this case, I'm a service owner. I'm creating search service. I also might have consumers. Okay? Postman runs on microservices architecture. So Postman actually doesn't have dedicated QA people. Right now, the developers are responsible for all the testing. So we have a service consumer, potentially all of you, and a service provider, me who's coming up with search service. So let's take that example of service owner and producer. Sorry, service owner and consumer. And let's talk about consumer-driven contract testing. Who does some form of CDC testing today? Oh, OK. I see half a dozen hands. So just really quickly, consumer-driven contract testing. You have the idea of a provider. In this example, it's me. And consumer, it's one or more of you. I'm the provider. I've had a blueprint out there. I've floated a blueprint, and I say, this is how you should use my API. And the consumer or consumers say, great, thank you. This is how I am going to be using your API. And once you have that consensus, and once that communication has occurred, then you have a contract or a pact or some sort of soft binding agreement that this is what's going to happen. And this contract or pact allows you to continually evolve your microservices. OK, so a little bit chewier of an example. You have your provider at the top. You produce a blueprint that says, here's how you should be using my, my API. You have two consumers that say, yes, this is how I am going to be using my API. And I'm clearly documenting what endpoints I'm using and how I'm going to be using them. So this becomes a cycle that allows you, now me, sorry, the producer to say, oh, you know what? I'm going to update my service. And I update my blueprint. I, yes, I update my blueprint, but I also know what's already being used and how it's being used so that when I, I have a continuous integration process, when I release something to production or the next server environment, I don't stomp on my consumers. So really quickly, that's how we do uh, contract -driven test, consumer driven contract testing in Postman. And when it's time to deploy a service, in this example, yes, we actually have a continuous integration process. And we use our open source Newman uh, command line tool to run our tests on demand. And if those tests pass, then we deploy to production. If not, we hold it back and fix the, fix the reason why those tests are failing. OK, in addition to running tests on demand during our CI CD process, we also run ongoing health checks. And these are those CDC tests. Those are security checks. They're um, uptime. All these different types of tests we actually run. And you can actually see the scale with which we use our own product to monitor and make sure that everything's functioning as it should. All right. So to recap, um, when you're talking about how Postman engineering 
uses Mox. Oh, I wish I had a picture of Cooper, our dog, because we actually do dog food our own process. We use Postman at every step of our development process, and if something's a little painful, we actually feed that back into how we improve the product. So we start with the blueprint in a workspace, in a brand new workspace, and then we articulate our request examples, and then that informs our mock servers that we're, you, we're using as specifications in this case. And this should have another arrow going back and looping back for the continuous iteration. All right, so Postman doesn't consider ourselves an agile shop, but we do practice continuous iteration, specifically in the planning, development, and testing phases. Um, and we use mocks in the earliest stages as blueprints to visualize the intended service, and then also to decouple any kind of development and testing that's going on. And then lastly, those mocks are also what's used for CDC testing and ongoing testing.